the supreme irony of the current assembly elections is not lost on anyone. The masks, and certainly not the hijab, have come off the faces of those who have been preaching the virtues of secularism and communal peace to all and sundry for decades. The Congress's long playing record as being the custodian of India's secular architecture has been well and truly been shattered by the Punjab Chief Minister's well thought out blatant communal attack on the citizens of Bihar and Uttar Pradesh. Priyanka Gandhi's smiling and laughing endorsement, as well as cheering of that horrible moment when Chenni launched his attack, should not surprise anyone. It perhaps only surprises sections of Lachin's media, which still takes to the airwaves and produces reams of newsprint pointing fingers at the BJP as the party that has destroyed the la la land of Muslim Hindu unity. Fact is, the Congress party has unleashed its polarizing and communal ninja turtles that are shredding through community layers of pretense and make-believe that so characterize the Congress's thinking all along. I will explain to you why the masks have been taken off and what is the radical thinking behind the Chani Congress community gloves are off all out attack. Hi, and welcome all to the CAA show. CAA, as all of you know, is conversations and analysis. It is the thinking folks show who are interested in real debate and generation of ideas and not screeching and shouting. And my name is Jaggi Basin. And if you wish to be a part of our journey, then press the big red subscriber button on your screen to join this journey. The subscription is, of course, completely free. Politics is always full of irony, and surely there can't be greater irony than the fact that Charanji Channi himself a Dalit, who should know a thing or two of how much oppression Dalits have faced over the centuries, has launched an all-out racist and communal attack. He has targeted the bhaiyas of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, which, if you did not know, is a pejorative slur. He is also called Arvind Keshriwal, a blackie who has entered Punjab to muddy the waters of his pristine state. For a moment, it looked as if Chani was echoing a line straight out of the MNS party of Maharashtra and Raj Thakre that had targeted North Indians in that state. And if the apologists of the Congress party tell you that Priyanka Gandhi does not understand Punjabi and she cheered Channi innocently, then think again. The Congress and not so much the BJP has been indulging in communal stereotyping for quite some time. Priyanka Gandhi knew fully well what Channi was saying and referring to. It is all part of the Gandhi siblings plan to pit community against community, region against region, state against state. It stems from their radical thinking that India is not really a nation, but a collection of states, and it is best to play up divisiveness to gain electoral benefits. I can give you example after example of this new perverted thinking that has gripped the Congress party. Let us start with the famed pitch of the Congress that Muslims are being targeted in India by the BJP. The fact is that if you are a true believer of communal harmony, then you play down divisiveness and fill in the fault lines between Hindus and Muslims. You don't play up the issue. Now look at the Congress rhetoric down the ages. They keep reminding everyone, and especially the Muslims, at the first given opportunity that the Muslims are subjugated by the BJP. They pick up any random incident of lynching or inflammatory rhetoric to build a case. Fact is, who emphasizes the other? Certainly not the BJP. A dharam sansad by some crackpot does not define the policy of the ruling dispensation. Divisive opinion has always existed in the country. Why play it up? Why keep emphasizing that Muslims are special category? The Congress injects the feeling of isolationism in the community, which increases their alienation and ghettoization. 
The Congress is most happy when the community is in isolation and feels threatened by real and imagined dangers. In fact, I would go to the extent of saying it is in the Western interest of the Congress that the community does not integrate with the mainstream. They did the same thing with the Sikhs. Very much like them, they are encouraging radical outfits like the PFI and the Campus Front of India to radicalize the Muslims in the hijab controversy. They did the same thing with the Sikhs many decades back when they encouraged and built up Janelle Singh in Bhindranwale to ghettoize and alienate the Sikhs on questions of identity and punk. Recently in parliament, in his remarks to the president's address, Rahul Gandhi, in the name of federalism, kept raising the Tamil identity issue again and again, hoping to open the fissures between North and South once again and rekindle the old language wars. Now, coming back to Punjab again, just look at what the Congress is doing. Sikhism does not recognize the caste system. Yes, there is a sizable Dalit population in Punjab. However, no caste conflicts plague Punjab unlike some other parts of the country. The teachings of the gurus for a casteless society are by and large followed in Punjab. And then Rahul Gandhi jumps in with his confrontational thinking and appoints a tribal yes man and a Dalit chief minister. The objective of appointing a Dalit CM is not for Dalit empowerment, but to use his Dalit credentials for vote bank benefit in Punjab and other states. Never in Punjab have politics played out on casteist lines and they have started to do so now. If in the process, communal relations between different communities is disturbed, then so be it. That is the new thinking of the Congress. All these developments beg the question, which is the real casteist, communal and racist party in the country? One can hide behind communal harmony cliches rhetoric and preaching, but the real hideous face and the naked lust for power of the real communalists in the country sooner rather than later comes out in the open. And on this note, I come to the end of this episode of the CAA show. I hope you really enjoyed this episode. Uh, do subscribe to us. And on this note, it's goodbye and cheers from my end.